my pleasure to introduce here at courtside with us a man who will be joining us for a few games this season, the famous, the great Steve Alford. Great to have you with us, Steve. It's good to be here, Chuck. Well, Notre Dame comes in here after a big loss to, to Butler the other night, but uh, they bring a lot of competition, a lot of tradition. This series goes way back. It goes way, way back. 1908, to be exact on the last time they played, a long time ago, and now this is their 55th meeting, so it ought to be a lot of fun tonight. Well, what does Notre Dame bring to this contest tonight? Two very big fellas uh, in Ellison Tower. Extremely strong, extremely big, and we're going to have to do a very good job of handling him inside. There's Ellis on the breakaway. He's very, he can do just about everything with the ball, can I, he not? I talked to Coach McLeod before the game tonight, and he said he's got the best set of hands of anybody he's ever coached, and Coach McLeod's coached an awful lot of good big guys. Now, th their big center is 6'11 Tower, uh, number five. Keith Tower, what can he do? He's a big guy that has a good touch. He likes the outside game, which is strange for a guy his size, but he goes to the boards very hard. He had 11 in their first game against Butler. Well, Indiana's first two games have been sort of a roller coaster. What do you expect tonight? They need consistency. I was at practice yesterday and again today, and, and Coach Knight's really stressed consistency and being consistent in both halves and throughout the entire game. All right, let's take a look now at the Napa important parts of the game. First for Notre Dame, Chuck, I think you've got patience. I think they've got to have a slow tempo to win this game. If it's an up tempo, I think it favors Indiana because of Indiana's quickness. Second, they've got to get to the line. Butler played them at Notre Dame, and Notre Dame got the line 13 less times than what Butler did. They've got to do a good job being aggressive. For Indiana, I think they've got to put two halves together that are consistent halves, and they've got to rebound. They've got to go to the boards with Tower and Ellis and battle them because they're down 48-38 to start this game. Okay, give your car the starting power it needs get the Napa legend, the better battery. And we'll return with the starting lineups after these messages. So I'm doing my sound check. Now. Hey! He's, he's loosened up. You can control both ears. Talk to him, Jerry. I got you. Okay. 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 Oh, he's going to start Russell. Joe Russell. A near capacity crowd on the hand tonight. The weather outside has uh, kept a few fans on, so we hope you're ready for the game. Okay, all set now. Let's take a look at the matchups, starting lineups for tonight, Les. Or, uh, <laughs> Steve, I'm sorry. Hard Hamilton. Yeah, it sure is. Well, I think the key matchup right off the bat is Ellison Nover. I think Matt's going to have to good, do a good job of keeping Ellis off the boards. Ellis brings with him the leading shot blocker in Notre Dame history, something that the Indiana guys are going to have to be aware of when they take it to the basket and do a good job of showing the shot fake. Another key matchup might be Joe Ross and Henderson in the middle. Does that surprise you, Ross starting? Not really, not with the, the size. I know Coach McLeod didn't mention it at the, at the prior and the onset when I talked to him before the game. But he replaces a freshman in the lineup, and maybe they want to go with a little more experience. Okay, we'll be back with the opening tip-off following these messages. Why are you drinking so much? Good example there, John McLeod in his first season with Notre Dame. They're good friends. Uh, Digger Phelps, of course, formerly at Notre Dame, a very good friend of Bob Knight's, but John McLeod's a good friend too. Two very, very good coaches that I have an awful lot of respect for. I've been able to have the great opportunity to play in for both of them. Indiana leads this series 2-1, uh, to 36-18. IU has won five of the last six meetings. Notre Dame hadn't won a game in Assembly Hall since 73. I think we talked about it before with John Shoemate. So it's been a long time. I'm sure they're hungry and it'll be a very competitive game. All right, let's get things underway here. It's going to be Nover to jump against Ellis. And the tip is controlled by Ellis. He goes high in the air. Very athletic player and will... Uh, see him put that athletic ability to good use tonight. As usual, Indiana starts in a pressure man-to-man -man defense. That Ellis. probably won't change. That's right. Bennett in the corner. Ellis will turn around, take the first shot, and a rebound to Cheney. 
And out quickly, Chris Reynolds. The last couple of practices, Andy has really been focusing on the fast break, trying to get some easy baskets. They want an up-tempo game tonight. Henderson getting the start tonight in place of Anderson. Reynolds makes the drive. Knocked out of bounds, Indiana ball. Notre Dame starts in a man-to-man. -man. Years past, Notre Dame and Digger Phelps has usually used a zone defense or some kind of gimmick defense, a boxing one. I know when I played, it's unusual to see a Notre Dame team in a man-to-man. -man. Well, we have a young man in the Bloomington Hospital watching us tonight. Pull up shot uh, that time by Calvert Chinney, a little bit short. His name is Gary Sherfield. He's in the Bloomington Hospital. Gary, we wish the best for a speedy recovery. Bennett now directing the offense of the Irish, guarded by Reynolds. We played a minute, a little over a minute, 15 seconds. No score in the game. Each team has had one opportunity at the basket. Good patience right now on the part of Notre Dame. They've got to take their time and get a good shot each possession. Bennett and the steal. Good hands by Chris. And a foul as Greg Graham took it to the basket. This was a point of emphasis in the practice that the Indiana had to put an awful lot of good pressure on the Notre Dame guards. So good hands by Reynolds who created the steal. Greg Graham going strong to the basket goes to the free throw line. Damon Sweet with the first personal. And the first point of the game goes to Greg Graham. Now that's, that's interesting. The Irish have committed 18 turnovers while forcing Butler into only 11. This was a big concern I know of Coach McLeod when I talked to him before the game. They had to handle the ball well tonight to stay in this game and have a chance to win. Bennett as Notre Dame gets down into the attack zone very quickly. This is sweet. Ellis, good move. And it's not going to fall. And Nover had his hands on it, but taken away. Offensive rebound by Notre Dame. It's Malik Russell. Malik getting a surprise start. He's a freshman, 6'7". He's got a big task in guarding Calvert Chaney. It's a good matchup for a young, young kid coming into this. That's right. Joe Ross, first shot, no good. Chased down by Chaney. And he's left alone in the backcourt, up to Henderson. And now Graham sets it right side. Makes the penetration, and was it last touch? No. Good move by Graham. Made the right move, but the wrong decision on the pass. Notre Dame did not touch the ball. The officials for tonight's game, Sam Licklider, Ted Valentine, and Mike Stockner. Indiana leads 2-0 on the two free throws by Greg Graham. We have played a little over two minutes. Back pick into the low post. Notre Dame does a very good job of back picking. Something that Coach Knight was really working his players the last couple of days in practice. Had. What a great effort by Chris Reynolds coming from behind Russell Malik to deflect that ball out of bounds. One thing in defending the back pick, you got to have good communication. That's something Coach has really been harping his players on is talking more. Notre Dame trying to set. They'll run an offense. They run a lot of exchange between Garden and Ellis. Garden and Ellis. They really focus on Ellis in the low post. Right now, Indiana, Matt Nover's doing a good job of forcing him out high. If they yeah. can keep Ellis out high, it's the Indiana's favor. I think we've got a foul that's going against Notre Dame, and I believe it's the big foul in the middle. Number 53, Joe Ross. Joe Ross. Ross, one of the two Ross twins, John, also on the Notre Dame team, played at Northfield up in Wabash. Indiana with the ball and the two-point lead. Right now, I would think this tempo has to favor Notre Dame. Cheney pulls up, scores. He's fouled. He'll go to the line. Pretty good defense by the freshman. You just have an awful tough assignment. When you're playing an All-American, you got to expect All-American moves, and this is just a great offensive move. Pretty good defense, gets a hand in his face. Just an outstanding move by Calvert. Cheney's push foot almost slipped out from underneath him on that, too. Good aggressive play by Calvert. 5-0 as we have played three minutes. Notre Dame with the ball, trying to break onto the board. Here's the back pick. Good defensive adjustment by Graham. 
Inside, that's Ellis. Blocked. Loose ball. Indiana. Good hustle again by Reynolds. Right decision. Basket scores. He's fouled. Fred Graham on a feed. Just a perfect wing feed on the fast break from Chris Reynolds. Great steal at one end and a great decision on who to go to on the break. Made his mind up early. The foul is on Elmer Bennett. Here, Here he is off the steal. He's got a three on one. He makes the right decision, goes to Greg Graham. And Greg does an excellent job of finishing the play. Tower comes in replacing Russell for Notre Dame. Uh, uh, that's a replacing Ross, I'm sorry. And number 30 is in the lineup. That's Billy Taylor. He replaces Russell. Won't fall. Graham had a chance for a three-point play. Indiana with a seven-point lead, 7-0. Seven and we're in the early going of the first half here at Assembly Hall. Notre Dame needs a basket in this possession to kind of settle down and get into the flow of the game. Indiana's doing an outstanding job of getting them out of the flow of the game. Another turnover. And that's good overplay by Calvert Cheney and also Allen Henderson. Henderson fronting tower. Excellent overplay and excellent defensive pressure on the guy handling the basketball. Notre Dame with uh, two turnovers to Indiana's one already. Drops it back. Inside, and over. Tempo's picked up a little. It's, that's to Indiana's favor. They got the crowd in it. Loose ball picked up by Wren. Great Andrew. pass. It's good. He fouled. Henderson on the alley-oop. Didn't hook up on actually the play, but it was a great pass. Good hands. An outstanding pass. Chris Reynolds doing an excellent job of leading this team. Here's a missed shot by Calvert, a long rebound again by Chris Reynolds. A great pass here into Allen Henderson for a lob, and Allen does a great job of completing it. Don't fall. Rebound pulled down by Taylor. Here come the Irish. They trail 9-0, and Coach John McLeod can't let this lead get too far away. We have a pushing in foul called on Henderson. Got a little bit too close and nudged him. It's the first foul on Henderson. And we have a timeout, 15.47 left in the first half. It's 9-0 Indiana. We'll be back after these messages. Individual play from IU's last televised game. In the first half of the Butler game, the effort of Damon Bailey epitomizes the Amex high energy play of the game. After scoring, Damon hustles back and steals a bulldog pass. Chris Reynolds picks up the loose ball. He feeds it to Calvert Cheney on the wing. Calvert drives the baseline and scores. Keep up the good work, Damon. The high energy play of the game from Amex Coal Industries. It is presented by authority of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated and is intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this broadcast without the express prior written consent of the Big Ten Conference is prohibited. Well, Terry Garl, Tim Garl, the trainer here at IU, his brother, is recovering from surgery in Memorial Hospital in South Bend. Terry, if you're listening tonight, we wish you the best and speedy recovery, my friend. Get back on your feet soon. Oh, there's a back cut. And that goes from Tower underneath to Bennett for Notre Dame's first two points. One thing they've been working through in their walkthrough, I know Coach Knight mentioned time and time again today, watch the back cut. They do an excellent job of back picking and back cutting. Kicked away. But Indiana recovers. Reynolds. Turnaround by Henderson is short. Save. Again, a nice rebound by Chris. Greg was a little slow. Oh, good move. Point. Greg Ray just four. anticipated that. Yes. Great play. Henderson has Nova at the post. And elects not to go to him. Comes away. And the 45 second clock sounds. Indiana fails to convert. Don't really understand that call, Chuck, because there's a change of possession. Yes, that's right. Notre Dame right. had the possession. That's exactly right. Let's we'll check to see. Sam Licklider is over here checking with the official clock. Now, what do you do in a case like that? I think you almost have to give the ball back to Indiana. 
if you make the right call because Notre Dame definitely had possession at the, end, at the other end. As long as a kid gets two hands on the basketball, that's considered having possession of the basketball. Now the officials now are conferring. There's Coach. I don't think you can give the ball back with the full 45 second no. clock. But I think the ball, the possession of the ball has to be in the end. Okay, let's take a look at where this happened. Here's the shot that didn't hit anything. Chris Reynolds then retrieves the ball and throws it out. Okay. It's tipped away. Now here's the possession. And here's Bennett who has possession of the basketball. He makes a possession pass and that's a turnover. If they give him a turnover, it has to be possession. Okay, the officials now hopefully have things straightened out and apparently uh, apparently it's going to be Indiana ball. So Indiana has substitutions. Jamal Meeks, Damon Bailey, and Eric Anderson are in. Matt Nover, Chris Reynolds, and Greg Graham take a seat and it'll be Indiana ball. Coach Knight subs early for the guards. The guards did an excellent job of putting good pressure. Jamal, who already through two games has 14 assists to only four turnovers in the lineup. A great assist player outside, and the shot forced up by. Bad foul by yeah, Eric. It sure was. It's one thing he's had some trouble with early going in the season is getting in foul trouble early. That's got to be a bad play on his part. Well, he sort of got in the doghouse because of that. And against Butler, he picked up three quick ones and didn't play too much in the first half. And well, we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even I've been. <laughs> Here's Sweet. Notre Dame trailing 9 to 2. Tower working off the high post. And a reach over by Allen Henderson or Damon Bailey coming through. I think they'd call it on Damon. And that is Damon's first. The Heldenville, Indiana sophomore. Averaging 13 points. Shot from the side is no good. And here's Meeks. Indiana's doing a good job on the board. It's been a big key for him. All the way by Jamal. Right through the pack and Allen Henderson. Steve, have you seen a big man follow as well for a freshman as he does? Allen's doing an excellent job to start the season. right? Averaging 18 points, and I think that just shows right there what kind of athletic field he is. Cow. Nice to muscle his way through. He's the biggest player physically on the court. Bennett for three outside. Here's Meeks with the loose ball. Cheney. Good decision. No place to go with that shot except take it. He's got to take that shot. An open eight footer. He's got to take it. On in the corner. And a foul over the back. Good position foul. blocked out by Damon. This son Damon start. He's always been a good rebounder. He really did a good job in the Butler game, and I know they've been using a lot down low and stressing the guards to help out in rebounding. Russell is back in. Russell replaces Sweet. As McLeod tries to get some combination in there that's going to work. That's exactly what he's trying to do. They're really struggling offensively right now at the jump shot. Damon watching him shoot in pregame. He was hitting with regularity from the three-point area. High in the air goes Tower. Henderson reaches around, commits his second foul. Damon had an excellent practice yesterday. Really shot the ball as well as I've ever seen him shoot it. I think he's fully recovered from the back injury that he had a couple weeks ago. That could have been very serious, Steve. It really could have been. I think at, at first the trainer, Tim Gall, thought it was something to do with this disc. Fortunately, it wasn't anything that serious. Indiana has to be very careful that they just don't get too careless here with the pace of the game and get into foul trouble. Well, this is part of the game I'm sure Coach Knight's really got his main focus on is if they can sustain this kind of intensity throughout the half. A mental mistake there by Taylor turns it over on the travel. Notre Dame's fourth turnover already. Anderson had slipped momentarily behind Ellis. Anderson was a little bit too far away to make the hookup. Look at Meeks out there looking. Great three on the Dan. way. Nope, not going to go. Now quickly they come. This is Bennett on the drive. Pulls up at the line. I'll tell you, Notre Dame just can't buy it here. Ellis. Uh, check that. That's 21. Russell just really struggling to start the season with their shooting. Been a big concern of Coach McLeod. Russell goes away. This is Taylor. 
There's Ellis. Put three down on him. He just can't go anywhere in the little running. Ellis from outside, however. Good move by him. Move to an open spot. He's a good shooter. He's got a good touch for a big man. 11-4, and Indiana's had a scoring drop for about 90 seconds. Anderson breaks that ground with his first field goal. Very nice V cut by Eric and a good pass by David. They go into Ellis as often as they can, and a foul, offensive foul. They call that against Russell, as Indiana had moved over very quickly on the rotation to take the charge. And with 11.57 left on the clock, we have a timeout. Score at 13-4, Indiana. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. When Keith came and he had all those chains on him and everything, I said, good night, he'll never stay here. <laughs> Well, that changed no the right. yeah, You know, I ran into him at Minnesota. He came over to me and he says, honest to God, he says, I wish. I just wish I'd gone for it. Oh, yeah. Thirteen four, eleven fifty seven remaining in the first half. Steve, observations so far? Well, the difference in the game is shooting. Notre Dame's been struggling in their opener against Butler, and they're struggling again tonight, just 2 of 11 for 18% to start the game. That's uh, an interesting graphic there. Last Saturday, 55% from the field, and held Butler to just 42. And again, now tonight, holding Notre Dame to just 18% from the field. Although, Indiana's only 38. Meeks. Not going to go. So both teams finding lids on the basket here with Indiana getting the early advantage, however. Indiana's just 5 for 15. So both teams are struggling to start the game. Sweet. Bennett outside. This is Tower. Plays a very high post. Coach McLeod likes to have the post open for guys like Tower and Ellis to get inside. Indiana battles over the ball. Nover with the rebound. to Bailey. There's a cut by Cheney. Nover, he'll fire if he's open from there, but a little beyond his range. Good rebound by Tower. This is the pace Notre Dame wants. They've just got to knock down some jump shots. Ellis, no, Anderson. And tipped away from him by Tower. Another offensive rebound by Notre Dame. Tries to use Tower as a screen. Thrown away out of bounds as Bailey got a hand on the ball and couldn't control. John Ro Joe Ross, I'm sorry, back in for Tower. Tower has two fouls. Probably a good break and a good decision by Coach McLeod. That came at the 10 43 mark. Here's Sweet. Indiana with good defensive pressure. Ross. And an offensive foul, and that's Ellis. He turned right around into Calvert Cheney, who had already set his position. Good, good position by Calvert. Heads up play. John Ross. The other half of the twin combination replaces Ellis. John is just an inch shorter, 6'9". From here, you can't tell the inch, so I'll leave no. it figuring out between the two of them up to you. Now those kids uh, really did a good job playing for Northfield, and uh, Northfield had a great team with those two they did. youngsters there. They're great kids. I, I've had them down at my basketball camp at Franklin the past couple of summers. Calvert, somewhat quiet for about the last five minutes in scoring, hits the first of two free throws. It's and, some, uh, something I talked to Calvert about after the uh, Soviet, before the Soviet game after the UCLA game. games where you didn't get most of your points until after about uh, 30 minutes of this play. Exactly. If you run up 20, Indiana picks some screens for 40 minutes, they're going to get tired. Well, they caught Bailey slapping the ball away. Apparently he got part of the arm of Sweet. I think that's two on Damon. Let's take a look. Maybe we can see. Kind of a tough play. He's got yeah. in position, and then he just hits the right arm. 
So Greg Graham is back in. He'll replace Cheney, and uh, Calvert sits down with just four points. You're much more aware of what's going on out there in the and the 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 tempo of the game. Uh, the changes in the tempo to the average fan are very subtle, but what do you look for, Steve, when you look for a pickup or a slowdown in tempo? A lot of times it's your bench, the substitutions that are made. Coach Knight, I think that's to his advantage because he's got a deeper bench. That's one thing Notre Dame is going to struggle with this year at the places and the schedule that they got to play. They're going to need a good bench, and right now their bench is very, very young and very inexperienced. And coming into a place like this and playing a top-ranked team like Indiana, I think that's where the tempo changes are going to much be better to the advantage of Indiana than it is Notre Dame. We were talking about schedules. Oh, and Notre Dame's got a beauty. They play North Carolina. They play at West Virginia. Turn around by Anderson off the sides of the rim for his second field goal. We've got Marquette. They play UCLA. A lot of Pac-10 teams. A lot of Southeastern Conference teams. Good pressure by Jamal. Oh boy, and I'll tell you, they had Force to call time. Out. Yes, sir. I had to call the time out there. Smart Bennett play. says we've got to talk it over. 16 to 5 to score Indiana at 9.39 left in the first half. We'll be back after these messages. to have Eric Anderson playing his position with mobility. Well, it's a good bench for Indiana tonight. You got Anderson and Bailey coming off the bench, do a good job of attacking the Ross kid and going right up at him. Nine minutes, 39 seconds left in the first half, 16-5 Indiana. Notre Dame trailed 9-0 before they got on the board. Sweet right through his hands. Here's Jamal with the steal. Those are turnovers I know Coach McLeod just can't tolerate. Nover. Good ball movement by Indiana. Step in by Graham. Nice to the move. glass, but it won't go. Ellis clears. You're sweet. No Notre Dame's been working on a secondary break, trying to score a conversion before the opponent's able to set up in their half court defense. Something that Coach McLeod's really been stressing in practices. Russell. Run it through. And a surprise start tonight. Sweet. Russell's pretty good size to be playing the wing. Steve, here's a bad pass. Another bad Steve. pass. There's a shove in the back, and that's a flagrant foul. That'd be flagrant. No basket, but it's a flagrant foul. Great pressure defense, both by Jamal and Greg Graham. Good steal by Greg, steps in nice with the right hand, makes the contact, ready to go to the free throw line. Good play. Billy Taylor with his first foul, a 6'4 freshman from Aurora, Illinois, played at West Aurora. The Indiana guards really aren't giving the Notre Dame guards fits, it's the forwards that they're Given problems to on the pass, trying to get back to the guard to Notre Dame. One so thing Notre Dame's going to have to do against Indiana pressure is pass fake and shot fake if they're going to beat them. Boy, that's something to distress to you guys for four years, wasn't it? That's that's what I'm saying. Indiana does an excellent <laughs> job of because they're practicing drill by this by Coach Knight every day. Well, it's uh, for those who follow Indiana basketball, it's so apparent what just a pass fake or a shot fake can do to the defense. Kicked away, a little give and go started over there between Anderson and Bailey. But it was kicked away by Notre Dame, so it'll be Anderson's ball or uh, Indiana's ball and the reset of the shot clock. Chuck, we talked earlier about Notre Dame's schedule. I know that's something Coach McLeod's been talking about before the game with me. They're away from Joyce Arena up in South Bend for 37 straight days. Nova. Nova. 37 straight days. That's a lot longer than even John's accustomed to about being in the NBA. Well, you were with him for a couple of seasons down in Dallas. I'm glad we didn't have road trips <laughs> like that. Oh, that's a great pass. The alley oop to Ellis. Great play. He's got eye vision between each other and a great back cut. 19 7. Indiana's lead is 12. And we have reached the eight minute mark of the first half. Bailey working the baseline off both screens by Anderson and Nover. Two guards out with Bailey working the baseline. 
and uh, that pass by Anderson as Meeks was going away it resulted in a turnover. Critical part of the game for Notre Dame, a chance for him here to get back in the basketball game. And Ellis will go up for the stunt. There's patience by Ellis as Indiana Harris to the ball, but he scores for his third field goal, and it's 19-9, a 10-point Hoosier lead. Notre Dame is here to play tonight. And apparently Anderson's here to get on that quick release. A very good shooter for a guy his size. A good touch and he likes the outside shot. Big basket by Indiana. Ellis. Sweet. Good pressure by Jamal. This is Taylor. Nova with the foul. First on Matt. There's a senior junior, senior by class, junior by eligibility. Cheney's back in. So is Reynolds. Elmer Bennett. Williams is coming in for the first time. Our first chance to see him tonight. Jason Williams, who played at Pike High School. He's a freshman. Very good player that's wanting to get some more playing time. This is what we mean by change of tempo. Both coaches go to the bench. Now you look for a change of the game. Oh, that's a quick shot. Nice turnaround jump by Sweet. Got to look to get the big four. Sweet, Tyler, Ellis, and Bennett more into the Notre Dame offense. They returned 55 points from last year. Nova with the move on Ellis. Graham. Coach McLeod's wanting to put the man-to-man -man defense into the Notre Dame system. You can't get any better test than going to the right Tell you, you get to Cheney, you get Cheney the baseline, he is so quick on the first and second step, Steve. Very quick. His second, third step's not too slow either. <laughs> no. Yeah, but by that time it's too late. It's a step in and a, and a block then if you get in front of him. Bennett picks it up. Look how close. Good Reynolds move. cuts up the guardian. The next yeah. shot is by John, John Ross. His first field goal. Very nice turn to the baseline. Good screen by Calvert. That's an air ball over everything. Clear by Ellis. And Notre Dame puts the conversion game to good use here. Rebound, however, to Cheney as the shot was long off the rim. The shot they really needed to have go for him. The Irish have been fighting back and fighting back. Been a good time for him to make a shot and get back into the game. Blocking foul against Notre Dame. And uh, they are at 10. That's going to be mandatory two shots. Right? Chris Reynolds will shoot. There's John. Changed his hairstyle. Yeah, he's still. Yeah, it's a little more wavy than it was when I was at <laughs> Dallas. He had a little more curl in it, Dallas. That's what cold weather in Notre Dame will do to you being out of Dallas. Yeah, we had a chance to talk to him just briefly before the game. I said, welcome back. Of course, he's a graduate of uh, Clarksville, Providence, who was born in New Albany, Indiana. He says, well, thank you, but I don't know whether congratulations are in order. I don't know whether I really want to be here or not. I don't think he wanted to be in Assembly Hall this early yet. <laughs> Second shot by Reynolds is good. His first point. Reynolds is averaging six through the UCLA and Butler games. Coach McLeod's first job was at Smithville High School. He's there for two years, which is located just outside here in the Olympic. As many of you remember when he coached at Cathedral High School with Bill Green. He was an assistant there, and then went on from there to Oklahoma. This is his first time back to college basketball since 73. That's got to be a real change for him, Steve. It's a big change. I think he really enjoys it a lot more. The players respect him more. His, his personality, I think, best fits the college game. He's such a nice guy, a good guy to play for, but with all the money and things involved in the NBA, this is a better place for him. Right? Ellis lights it up from about 16 feet for his eighth point. 24-15, who's your lead is still nine, but Notre Dame playing tough ball out here. Graham will go to the line as he's fouled by John Ross. Good pass inside, good strong move to the hoop. Substitution, number 32, Nathan Gilmore from San Marcos, Texas, another freshman, 6'8". 
There's only one junior listed on the roster of Notre Dame. That's Matt Adamson. Look at that. This was the big key that we said this was an important part of the game today, but they've got to get to the line much, much more today than they did against Butler in their opening. And they're not doing that right now. Indiana is doing a much better job of getting to the foul line than what Notre Dame is, and that's a big key for Notre Dame. Well, Ellis has, has got his competitive spirit up. He's playing pretty hard at both ends. High for that free throw miss on the rebound, and he's playing very tough down here offensively as he posts. Something Coach McLeod told me before the game, he's going to use his bench, and he's definitely using his bench much more tonight than he did against Butler. He played just eight guys in the Butler game, only got two points in 30 minutes out of him. So he's really looking for some butt, some bench production. Well, look at, at this. In this particular case, he comes over very aggressively and overdraws the foul as uh, he gets too much body in there. It's a tough call, good aggressive move by Matt and a good aggressive move by Ellis. A lot of times that's going to go to the offensive player. Alfonso Ellis says Indiana now is over the limit they just committed their seventh foul sweet will be checking back in for the Irish and Ellis who was four for four against Butler adds one more they call him the Fonz or E just their fourth free throw and they've got Notre Dame's got to get the line much more than just four times Bailey comes in as Nova sits down and Indiana going with a small lineup but a little quicker Look for Indiana to pick up the pace here in the last four minutes. Coach Knight loves the last five minutes of the first half. Look for him to apply an awful lot of pressure and pick up the tempo. It is there's that quick up court pass. Transition offense, the drive! Oh, that's good hand motion by Chris Rimmel. Great pass and a great back cut by Chris. Three minutes, 51 seconds left in the first 20 minute period. 27-16, Indiana's lead is 11. Notre Dame should pound it in. It's a small Indiana lineup. You combat the quickness by taking it into your strong people and matching quickness with strength. Oh, boy, Taylor for three from the corner. Billy Taylor, who was one for three against Butler from that area. And those are his first points. Notre Dame's bench looks much more comfortable tonight. I think Coach McLeod knows with this schedule, he's got to have bench production offensively to be able to stay in games, especially Graham. on the road. Well, Graham misses that one. Here's a quick outlet. Up it comes to Sweet. And Bailey does a good job of shutting that off. Offensive foul right into the hands of Nathan Gilmore. No, they say travel before the foul. So Gilmore took too many steps before the contact. We have three minutes, nine seconds remaining. It's 27-19 Indiana. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Take a look at that. Uh, could have been a foul, could have been travel, but uh, our director Jerry Wheatley says a little bit of traveling music here. One, two, three. Yeah, yep. four. You gotta put the ball down if he's gonna move. Good defense by Reynolds. Max Logue of Sydney, Australia, is seeing his first game in Assembly Hall. He's a long distance fan of Coach Bob Knight and the Hoosiers. He's sitting just behind us here watching basketball Hoosier style. Important part of the half for Coach Knight's team. It controlled the whole first half. Big oh, basket. That's a three-pointer by Cheney. He, was, he, he took it away. They reversed it. He was squared up, ready to shoot. They needed a basket, and they went to their go-to guy. Very nice offensive possession out of Indiana. Well, they tried to back cut. Sweet tries to go through, but Graham did a good job of rotating. Yomar, Sweet. to Ellis. Sweet. Nope. Uh, Cheney is right there. Good second effort. Nice rebound by Calvert. And a technical foul has been called against the Notre Dame bench. 
John McLeod must have said something to him as, as he passed by, but Sam Licklider didn't like what he heard or heard. That was awful quick, I thought. Yep, I did too. So Cheney will be shooting the two with 2.15 left in the first half. Big turnaround for Indiana. Make it a four-point play or you possible a five-point play. You like those four-point plays, don't you? They're a lot of fun. I wish I'd had them for more than one year. <laughs> Hands on check there to Chris Reynolds. Feet inside Good Anderson. Pass. Oh, how did he ever get that shot off? Oh, strong move by Aaron. Notre Dame needs a basket. They were within eight points. Now it's back to a 15-point lead for Indiana. Good overplay by Reynolds. Look at him, Hawk sweep. And a whistle, out of bounds, Indiana. Notre Dame is out of a rhythm right now, Steve. They're going to have to settle it down some way. Kirk gets a very quick lineup. Good substitutions by Coach Knight. This was the change of tempo. Much quicker tempo, much quicker team on the floor for Indiana. John Ro Joe Ross will be coming back in for the Irish. There's Cheney. Anderson. Three more. Two. No, two. They saved it on the line. Here's a steal. Great hands by Greg. To Bailey. Wise to capitalize right here. There it is. Great. Oh, yeah. Great cut. Great back cut. Coach McLeod needs a timeout, even though it's close to half. I think he's going to get one. Indiana's on an 11-0 run. One minute, 15 seconds left to play in the first half. 38-19, Indiana. What do you think? Very tough run there for Notre Dame. Technical, make two free throws, come back with a steal. An 11-0 run to close out the half here for Indiana. I know Coach Knight's pleased with the lineup he's got in. Well, we said at the outset of the game that the important thing was for Indiana to play two very consistent halves. We're seeing a half right now that, by and large, with the exception of this outburst that we've had here in the last 90 seconds of play, we've seen a fairly consistent half. I guarantee you in a minute 15 at halftime, Coach Knight will be saying the exact same things to his team. That we've got one consistent half, now let's put together a second half. Look at this shot again. How Well, this is the outside shot that he got off, and he's right in his rhythm. I mean, it's a step up. The arm, the shoulders, everything are squared. He's, he's just in perfect position. So he's not being denied his spot on the floor. But he's an outstanding shooter, and he's playing very aggressive now. He's been a little down, I think, on himself the way he's been playing. He's coming out and responding very well tonight, coming off the bench. Eric's just a super young man from Chicago, Illinois. Played at St. Francis de Sales in Chicago. He's a senior. Very good timeout by Coach McLeod. He's trying to settle his team down. The crowd's into the game now. It's very important for Notre Dame get a couple baskets here before halftime and try to cut into this 19-point lead. Jamal Meeks, along with Chris Reynolds, Greg Graham, Eric Anderson and Calvert Cheney. Look at the field goals now. Things have changed a little bit. Notre Dame shooting 33%. Indiana's picking up a little bit from 38% to 46. It's very tough for Notre Dame to win in this building, shooting 33% from the floor. A little step in trap by Calvert Cheney. Just sort of destroyed the rhythm a little bit. And uh, good hand by Reynolds. Anderson with the steal. We have 48 seconds left in the first half. Too quick for him. Meeks on a good move. Had a mismatch, had Joe Ross on Meeks out front. Meeks is way too quick. Number 15 is Brooks Boyer handling the ball. Calling B square. <laughs> Boyer trying to direct something, get something working here. Notre Dame needs a basket. Indiana needs to close out this 13-0 run with a good stop here to end the half. 15 seconds. They'll play for one, apparently. Taylor, well out of the shooting range. Boyer goes right past Meeks in the corner. And only two by Damon Sweet. At the buzzer, we come to the end of the first 20 minutes of play. An outstanding first half for Indiana.
and a scrappy Notre Dame team trying to stay in but just outmanned in about the last three and a half minutes. Halftime score, Indiana 40, Notre Dame 21. Indiana going away from its bench. You may wonder why this happened. John McLeod as Calvert Cheney takes the first shot. John McLeod tonight exercised the option of a visiting coach to go toward whichever basket he wanted to. And he elected to go toward his own basket in the first half. And nice that's a good move. move. Yes, sir. By Alfonso Ellis. Looks like they're going to attack the inside and go to Ellis a lot more in the second half, Notre Dame. Notre Dame got just six points in the paint. I used 22 in the first half. And a travel turnover against uh, Chris. Move his foot before he can get rid of the pass. Indiana scored 13 points off turnovers in the first half to Notre Dame's two. Big difference in defensive pressure being applied. I think a coach's nightmare is the unforced error, the unforced turnover. It is because usually unforced means mental, and that's the part of the game that Coach Knight's most concerned about. From the side, no good. Knocked out of bounds, Indiana ball. Big missed opportunity by Notre Dame. They scored first to start the half and had a chance to go four points up in the second half and weren't able to do it. Well, as we keep our eye now on Indiana and whether or not they can maintain some sort of consistency. This is a big half. I know Coach Knight probably at halftime had told his team this is the half he wants to be concerned about. Had a good first half. Now see what they can do in the second half. Cheney, up short into the hands of Greg Graham for the putback. Right spot at the right time. Good finish on the layup. Inside to Ellis, a little two-man game between Ellis and Sweet. Really looking to go inside to Ellis. He's got to get more involved in the offense. The ball's reversed. Ellis comes over and posts to the ball side. So he really has to be in the throes of the offense. Notre Dame needs to hit some outside shots to open things up for Ellis. If nobody will hit outside shots, Indiana's going to continue to play a sagging man-to-man -man when he's in the post. And a bump. And that was a little shoulder bump by Keith Tower, his third personal, first of the second half against Notre Dame. Man as big as that. Steve has to be very alert that he makes his move in an effort to screen or block early and very exactly. positive. Any slight movement that he makes, the fish is going to see because he's a lot bigger than the guy he's screening. Cheney, good move. Calvert to the line for two. Good move. His cut before he received the basketball set up that entire move. That's the shot fit. 44-23 Hoosiers. A must possession for Notre Dame. Indiana's doing a good job of bodying Ellis and keeping him away from the paint. Three on the way. Good block out by Eric Anderson. As long as those shots don't go down, Indiana conti con continue to sag on Ellis. And a little rush to hurry. Shot out of bounds. Indiana went through the hands of Ellis. And Elmer Bennett. Bennett, a senior from Houston, Texas, played at Bel Air. I know what Bel Air is. I have a son that lives in Houston. One thing about Notre Dame, they shouldn't have any, any trouble recruiting. They've got kids on their team from eight different states. You don't see that in very many universities or very many teams across the country. That's right. Notre Dame can, because of its name, can network so well. Into Henderson, blocked away, saved by Graham. Blocked by Ellis. Oh, that's a good feed out. And Anderson counters with good concentration for his 12th point. Eric's doing a good job of knocking down the open 15-foot jump shot. Another block by Ellis. He had a career-high six against Butler just this past week. Ellis is a blocker. That's his forte. Short. Out of bounds, Indiana. That's off Ellis's hand. So the young man is playing very, very aggressively. And I would think it, the one shortcoming to Lafonso Ellis is that he, he just doesn't get a complete season. 
He was academically ineligible last year, did not get to play. And, uh, you know, he's been a question mark all along that way. That really makes it tough on him, not only in the classroom, but on the court. Exactly. It's a, it's a good lesson for young players out there watching the night. That you've, it's got to be academics first, and you've got to do the job in the classroom in order to play the full season at the collegiate level. Cheney. Reynolds. Nope, not going to go. And there's Ellis again with a big board. Good hand. Great play by Chris. Graham at the point. Cheney. Nope. Elects to move it in. Drops it off. Henderson. To the glass. And a foul. Good move. Nice play by Chris Reynolds on the steal. That's on Tower. His fourth. Ellis gets the rebound, even makes a pass fake, and Reynolds is still able to recover from the pass fake. A great steal. Good heads up play. Russell will replace Tower, and so Notre Dame now will be handicapped in height, although Russell appears to be a pretty good size at 6'7. Tower at 6'11 just uh, is more imposing with those extra four inches. Bigger and more experience. You replace yep. a senior with a freshman. That's tough to do. Anderson, a little bit off his scoring, only four points in the first half, but uh, in defense of him, did not play extensively in the first half. Second shot is right on target. Indiana now has their largest lead of the night of 24 points. First part of the game. 47-23. 16 minutes left to Russell. Sweet. Good move. Good move by Sweet. Excellent move. Very good one on one move. Something Coach McLeod told me about Damon before the game. He's very good with the ball and creating something one on one. Anderson outside. Oh, that was right on target, but a little bit short. Here's Bennett as they get the conversion game going. Oh, on the line as Chris Reynolds made just another great hand slap of the ball and tried to make the save. 15-32 left to play. Indiana with the 47-25 lead, and we'll be back after these messages. Wellis and his great shot blocking ability, Steve. Great shot blocker. He's the Notre Dame career shot block leader. He missed seven games as a sophomore in the entire second half of his junior year. So to do that and be the leading shot blocker in Notre Dame history with the few games he's played is an amazing stat. And that graphic self-explanatory from last Tuesday against Butler. Notre Dame will have the ball. Bennett will be the trigger man. Indiana with a lot of overplay, but Bennett does get it. And back out it comes to Ellis. Good move of the ball. Russell misses the shot. And it's going to be out of bounds. Lost off the hands of Calvert Cheney. Just a moment here. You know, Indiana's free throw shooting is 69% to 67 for Notre Dame. Uh, free throw shooting was always a forte of yours. You realize that you'd have a good chance of getting at least uh, uh, a third, maybe half of your points sometimes at the line. Well, I still feel like it's the most important part of the game no matter what level you're playing at. If you don't hit your free throws, if you don't get the line and make good at the free throw line, you're not going to win a lot of games, especially the big games. And Indiana's got to do a much better job but once they get to the free throw line, making sure they convert on the free throws. Boy, look at Henderson blocking that out of bounds. It's going to be Indiana ball. Bob Knight wanted a foul. Well, I can remember uh, one Indiana game. Indiana has substitutions, Meeks, Bailey, and Nover back in. I can remember one game Indiana had. You've been on the road. I think you've missed two free throws in a row. And you came in here and uh, you you conned the student manager to stay with you until after everything's over, turn the lights on, and you shot 500 free throws. I, I don't know that there's that kind of dedication anymore. No, there's probably not. And I, I've seen a lot of kids through the camp at Franklin over the course of the summer, and there's not that kind of discipline and dedication to foul shooting. And it's the most important part of the game. I think kids get a little lax with their dedication and discipline when they go to the free throw line. That's why you don't see a lot of good foul shooters. Well, obviously, I think team-wise, uh, any team uh, across the nation, if they were to have a, a combined free throw shooting percentage of 75%, would consider that very good. Turnaround by Calvert Cheney. I'll tell you, he works so well to either side of the basket now. He Big put time. that, yeah, he put that up move. with his left hand, but uh, he shoots well with his right now. Ellis 
Well, the Indiana doing a good job of sagging back on the Fonz. There he is good again. defensive pressure. Turn around, Joe Ross off his hand, Indiana ball. I really feel for Ellis. I can just see what's going through his mind. Would, would one of you guards please hit a jump shot? They've got to hit some jump yep. shots to open up some things for Alfonso if he's going to be able to operate inside. He's got two or three guys on him because Indiana has confidence and Notre Dame can't hit the outside shot. Meeks on the give and go. Hard off the glass. He just lost the ball going up. Good cut. It's Bennett. Taylor. Out of bounds. And it will go to the Irish. Notre Dame's really struggling with their shooting from the field. It's tough to win on the road, especially in Assembly Hall, if you don't shoot the basketball well. Push. That goes against Indiana. Matt Miller. I think Matt was probably just beaten with the spot a little bit there. Picks the foul. Had the foul to get himself out of it. Williams is back in. Jason. Replaces Sweet. Sweet, who has been averaging 23 points, had 23 against Butler, leaves with but seven. Indiana has done a good job of keeping him out of the flow of the game. Once he gets on flow, he's kind of a streak player. When he gets on streak, he can be very tough to stop. Indiana playing its defensive positions with its defensive rules pretty well here. Another, foul. another moving screen. That's against Joe Ross. His second foul. Really, that stems from what Notre Dame has to go through at this end of the floor. When you have to continually fight screens, it's frustrating. Then you go to the other end, and you try to take it out offensively, and you get caught for moving screens. Nova was looking for someone else, wanted to shoot. He elected not to, then finally put it up for his second field goal. As long as it goes in, it's a good decision. Williams, Ellis, it's out of range out there. Those are doing a good job. Picks the dribble up. And there's some good overplay by Meeks knocking the ball out of bounds. That brings the coach up, Bob Knight. Good defensive pressure from Indiana. Ross. Taylor. Indiana with a lot of white shirts around that rebound. Here's Bailey. Tries to take it right through a maze of blue. Ellis for the two. Very good catch on the break by Ellis. Anderson cut by Dane Bailey. No foul. I think Greg Graham will be coming in here again in a moment. We have a block against Indiana. And that will be against Calbertini, his first foul. Let's watch this again. Good dribble move. Just caught Calbert sliding a little too slow. Tough call. Could have gone either way. Usually goes the offense in cases like that. So Graham replaces Bailey for Indiana at the 12:46 mark. Back to Ellis to Joe Ross. 51-27, Indiana with command of this game. 24-point lead. Notre Dame needs some good possessions. Bennett fakes the three. Here's the steal. Good anticipation by Graham. And the slam dunk. Great play by Greg Graham. It's about the fourth time tonight he's made a defensive deflection and converted to the other end for Indiana. Great play, and the crowd's back in it. To Ross. Notre Dame just has to put something together. Ross. And we have a jump ball. Possession goes to Notre Dame. Cozen. It's got to be frustrating for Coach McLeod. I think it's a good offensive principle. They're just doing a tough job of hitting an outside jump shot tonight. Another wide open 16, 17 foot jump shot that just doesn't go down. Fight for the rebound, hell ball situation. Carl Cozen, the lineup, 6'6 sophomore from Oak Lawn, Illinois, for the Irish. Seeing some action tonight. To Ellis, three on the way, and that's right on target by Elmer Bank. Much needed jump shot to go down for Notre Dame. 
It only takes arm two or check. three of those to open things up for Ellis. Right. A little arm check there. Uh, Graham back to Val. Now Meeks. Great Cheney cut. for three. Yeah! Great cut. He read his man perfectly. His man went to, on the under part of the screen. Anytime he does that, you flare to the corner. Won't go, but a foul on Jamal as uh, a little bit too much speed there, and Jamal couldn't slide quickly enough. Picks up personal, personal number, number one. Is first personal, the team's third. Jamal, a senior, certainly would like to go out and find Not style with all his contributions he's making assist-wise. And now Damon is going to be checking back in. I just had to sit down there for a minute to be told of that uh, move with the ball that he made. <laughs> into the paint wasn't wasn't too smart just a small lecture yeah just a small one Nover sits down Meeks does an awfully good job of working very hard with his game I think does the best job as far as doing floor leadership as anybody else on the team maybe him and Chris Reynolds Meeks is a tough competitor he does not like to lose those are always good kids to have on your team Meeks sees the whole floor and and he sees opportunities Seventh point, sixth and seventh for Elmer Bennett. We have a timeout, 11.21 left to play. Indiana 56 to 32. Back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Sports Network. About six feet over the 10 second line. Speaking of first and 10, Indiana will face Baylor in the third Copper Bowl, December 31st in Tucson. Tickets are available at the Athletic Ticket Office. There's an 800 number, 1 800 662 6873. The IU Alumni Association also has air and land tour packages available, and you can call 1 800 553 5527 for that information. Indiana making the move. Meeks. Cheney guarded by Ross. And Ross just is not quick enough to handle Cheney. The basket will count by Anderson. And the foul is against Notre Dame. And I believe Ellis. No, it's not. It's uh, Bennett. Both Ellis and Bennett were there. And Bennett picks up personal number two. It's just an outstanding hustle move on part of Anderson's part. Cheney misses a shot. Tough scramble. Loose ball. He picks it up. Converts the play and gets the foul. Another missed free throw. 60-32. It's a 28-point margin for Indiana. They're not letting the pressure up one bit. Bennett will move on Bailey. Cheney steps over to stop the baseline drive. And they're still playing a game with Bennett. Ellis underneath as Bennett hits for three. Ellis had moved into good offensive rebounding position. 1-3-1 one, one zone, half-court trap now by Notre Dame. First time we've seen that. Trying to change the tempo of the game. Drive, Cheney, off the glass, no. And the rebound to Ellis. Exactly what that defense is there for. Quick shot, quick tough shot. Tough shot for Cheney to hit. Where against the 1-3-1, one, one, where does the entry pass come, Steve? I like attacking it with the two-guard front because then you're attacking it against a third man. Okay. That man has to penetrate and draw the second line. Then I think the baseline's always wide open. Cheney was open there for the jump shot, passed it, passed it up and created a tougher shot for him. Baseline's open. Bennett's, Great Graham. Bennett's fifth point. Oh, there's, there's where he's open. And there's the top. <laughs> Against a 1-3-1, one, one, you've always got to be conscious when you catch the ball, turn, face the basket, and then you've got a three-on-one situation. Greg Graham's open weak side. Anderson misses him, goes to Cheney, a little slow, then delivered it to Greg Graham. As soon as Anderson got the ball, if he looked opposite, Greg Graham was wide open for a dunk. Russell is back in for Notre Dame. LaFonz Ellis and Zoe LaFonz. Bailey goes up, draws another foul. Good strong move, uses his body very well. And that's the second consecutive foul against Ellis. It's hard for young kids to understand. You get in a situation like that, you at least want to get out of it with getting to the free throw line. You go through all that work, get banged around, don't leave empty handed, at least get to the free throw line where you have a chance to do something positive. 
Bailey. Advantage that Bailey has when he's down low like that is that he has such the such strong legs. He can get up so well, and if he can put the ball fake and the, and the shot fake up to just pull the man slightly out of position where he can get an entry with his hands, he can go right through it. Exactly. Very strong legs and ha does an excellent job. We call them instincts in basketball of instinctively feeling the guy next to him and making sure he draws the contact. Contact always results in foul. First two points for Bailey. Bennett. Good adjustment by Indiana. John Ross. Good defense by Anderson. And look at Meeks to Bailey. Off the glass for two. Very nice play by Meeks. Good heads up play. Saw Bailey streaking down the floor. Timeout for the day. John McLeod says we have to talk it over at the 846 mark. 64-37 Indiana. Back after these messages. Six seconds. Look at this hookup. Great step in by Eric Anderson. He created that turnover. Knocked the ball away to Meeks. He looks up floor to Damon. Great play. Indiana is playing with some intensity that's a little bit longer than what we've seen before. And uh, a good example there. Notre Dame shooting the ball a little bit better, up to 43% this half. Here's the big story, I think, in the game. Notre Dame with 16 turnovers, Indiana with just four. Well, there's 17 turnovers, they can't get it in. Indiana ball. John McLeod inheriting a lot of players, and of course, uh, I, you talked to him before the game. He'd like to play man-to-man -man all season if he could. I think he recognizes he probably can't, but uh, he has been showing man. Now he still shows some zone here. I think he wants to stay with man, develop his own system, man-to-man -man pressure all over the floor, create an up-tempo game, which Notre Dame's usually been a slow-tempo team, playing a lot of zones. We have a foul that's going to send Greg Graham to the line. It's against uh, Notre Dame. And 30, Billy Taylor has picked up his second person. But an inexperienced team like Notre Dame playing man-to-man -man is very difficult to do when you're playing against a team like Indiana, the way they run the motion offense. Todd Lindemann will be checking in for Indiana, seeing his first action. First uh, free throw is missed on the one-and-one. One. Here's Bennett on the conversion. Loose ball picked up by Runner. Good pass. And a foul, and how do you call that? The basket was missed. He was going for the stuff. Malik with his third personal. I don't believe the hand got in the way of the shot. But, uh, good play by Chris Reynolds. Just a dribble that's lost. Picks it up. Makes a good judgment play. Hitting Cheney on the break. Russell's third personal. Cheney's. 17th, 19th point. Averaging 13 and a half through the UCLA and Butler games. I know when I played, I had certain teams that I really enjoyed playing against. I think Reynolds really enjoys playing against Notre Dame. His freshman year, he had 14 points, seven assists, and five steals, and he's got those kind of assists. Steal ratios denied, I believe. He's played very good floor game. Taylor gets it up. Played over there on the side by Bennett and Reynolds, and Elmer Bennett gets the better of it by two. Bennett's done a good job in the second half of hitting an open jump shot. Again, the 1 3 1 half court trap, trying to create some chaos from Indiana. Anderson will pull up and score. Excellent place, baseline move off the dribble. Good concentration with the hand in your face to hit the jump shot. Russell, look at Cheney. Cheney all over the court tonight. Forces the bad pass along with Greg Graham. And another costly turnover for the Irish. That was all Calvo Cheney. Good defensive pressure on the forward. Doesn't like to handle the ball out front. Cheney's played well. Lindemann relieves him at the 7-17 mark. I doubt if we'll see Calvert Cheney anymore. He finishes with 19 points. Very Anderson. Good game for Anderson wanted to shoot. That's pretty good freshman control there. Bailey. Three. Very nice ball moving out of Indiana. Now, you know, you stop to think about it. You got a big kid, 6'10, that's left alone that far away from the basket after one pass. 
you'd want to shoot. Probably learn something from the seniors in practice. Mm -hmm. Bennett to the line. Short. Comes Bailey. Locked away. There's that long, outstretched arm of LaFonzuela. Good pass. Good pass by Bailey. Reynolds has got to know when you're going up against a great shot blocker, you've got to make contact. Boyer and Gilmore in for the Irish, who trail 70 to 39 at the six and a half minute mark. Lindemann gets it up and goes away. Here's Henderson looking for something inside. Now Lindemann back to the ball. Good ball movement. Lindemann's a big body. He has to. Learn to use his body better and going and really head hunt for screens. Henderson. Oh, that was down in the well and out. Knocked away from the back, uh, blind side by Reynolds. But it will be Irish ball. Good hands by Chris. Chris really does a good job of using his ability, his quickness, and his aggressiveness on defense. Six minutes remaining. And his record will not go to two and one. Line violation by Notre Dame, uh, give and go. And uh, there's a travel that, that happens so many times when the cut is made too close to the ball. Notre Dame's 21st turnover to Indiana's four. It's really the story of the whole basketball game. The guards from Indiana have just given fits to the Notre Dame guards. The important thing for those of you, again, who that's off the rim, no good by Bailey. He followed the temperature of the Indiana bench all the time. Bob Knight in these next five and a half minutes wants to see the same kind of intensity that he did at the first of the game. Definitely. He doesn't expect anything with the game not in doubt now. He doesn't expect anything to taper off. Foul against Indiana. Greg Graham's first. This is a good experience for Notre Dame to play, play Indiana in your second game of the season with type of team Indiana has with a new coach and John McLeod and a new system trying to be installed. It's a good test for your kids. And I think it'll help them come later part of the season. It's only the fourth foul against Indiana in the second half. Here's Boyer. Bounces inside. Gilmore. And Ellis lets it fly. <laughs> Graham with his leaping ability takes it right away from Taylor. Good heads up play for right threes. Now he wasn't ready for that shot. But look at him chase it down. Good heads up play by Bailey. Missed a shot, but instead of hanging his head, he made up for it and got the offensive rebound. Good move. Oh, and that's a little bit too hard off the glass. Underneath to Ellis. That's a good feed on the conversion. The transition game for Notre Dame working there, and Indiana takes time out. We have 4.43 left to play. 70 41's the score. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Well, kids are back on campus now after the Thanksgiving vacation, and they're being treated to a fine lesson here tonight as Indiana taking the scheme of its offense and defense against the Irish and playing pretty sound game with four minutes and 43 seconds remaining. Indiana blew it open in the first half in the final three minutes and 35 seconds of the first period, outscoring the Irish 13 to nothing before Notre Dame could counter with a basket just before the end and before the intermission. Hoosiers with the ball. Right down at Bailey's feet, and reverses it to Leary, who lets three go. Air ball, back up, and a foul. And Gilmore got the arm of Greg Graham, so Greg will go to the line to shoot two. Todd wasn't quite ready, he didn't have his feet quite ready to shoot this three pointer. It's tough coming off the bench for your first shot to be a three pointer, wasn't quite ready. The coach has a piece of paper out right now explaining something to Leary. That piece of paper might be a decoy. What do you think, <laughs> huh? It's hard telling, Chuck. <laughs> Good balance scoring for Indiana. Cheney leading the team with 19. Graham has 13. 
14 from Eric Anderson. Look at the free throws. 23 to 6, 24 to 6 now, and free throws attempted. You just can't win many games, if any games, when there's that big a differential to foul on. This was a key for Notre Dame, and they didn't get the job done tonight. Ross came down and put the muscle into Lindemann, and Lindemann stood his ground. Goes in. There's Gilmore. And misses right off the shoulder of Lindemann. He's playing pretty scrappy out there right now. Whistle and over the back. The foul is going to be called against Kozan. Carl Kozan. Good block out by Bailey. And they make the long walk. Notre Dame fans will just have to be patient. I guarantee Coach McLeod will have a good system. He's a very good coach and he knows what he's doing. It just takes time, especially at this level and the teams that he has to compete against this year and the floors and why they have to go on the road. It's very, very tough. It's going to be a tough season, but they're, going to, they're young and they're going to learn. It takes two or three seasons to get your system installed. Well, Steve, I'll tell you something. I, uh, I'm looking out there at the Notre Dame players right now. I admire each of them because even the bench over here with the with the way that they have suffered in this game their heads are up they're not you know they're not hanging over they're watching the action and I'll tell you something with a good coach those players are watching and learning it's a tough transition not only for the coaching staff but for the players because the players are used to a certain system and now another coach comes in and puts in his own system that's tough to adjust to knocked away into the hands of Lindemann Indiana with another steal another turnover by the Irish. Indiana's just done an excellent job with hand and defensive pressure all night. Bailey looks, finds Leary. Three and a half minutes left. See a little ball control come back in as Reynolds has come up off the bench. He'll check back in. Leary. Versus it past Henderson. Good. Give pass. to Bailey. Oh, that's a great pass. And with that basket, the score now 76 to 41. Time for this 76 point reminder from your local 76 dealers who invite you to go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. Offensive foul. Gives the ball back to Indiana. Bailey has 11 now. Another tough Irish turnover. Majority of their turnovers have been ball handling mistakes tonight. Good game by Greg Graham. Graham sits down with 14 points, tying Eric Anderson, who is also on the bench. Four runner-up honors. Greg did an excellent job tonight, causing havoc defensively. Bailey started slowly. He's up to 11 now, Steve. And a whistle. And a back-end foul called on Lindemann. He's not afraid to mix it up. He's young, and he's going to get better. He's a big body. He's a strong kid. Something he's going to have to learn is learn how to screen and, and who to screen and when to screen. Because once he does that, he can be a very good screener. 76-41, 2.49 left to play. And Indiana will prepare itself now for the upcoming Make One Classic at the Hoosier Dome. It's coming Saturday against Kentucky. The Wildcats, who are strong this year, and Indiana will have to have its game going. Ought to be a good contest. I know Rick Tino's got to be upset with the way his team played at home against Pittsburgh. Turnaround by Henderson. That's too hard. Lindemann lets it go right through his arm. But he was hooked by Gilmore, I believe, which is part of the reason why he couldn't get his hands up. Nope, they caught no, they call it on Lindemann. Their two arms were together, and Sam Licklider calls it on Lindemann. Good call. There, incidentally, are still some seats available for the Bank One Classic at the Dome, and you can pick them up by contacting the Hoosier Dome ticket office. Suggestion would be to stop down there in person. Williams gets uh, Reynolds off his feet. Another shot goes awry, and here's Leary to Chris. Good back pick then by Lindemann. Lindemann turn around. Nope, won't go. Powers his own shot, commits the foul. Number three. I think the officials got Lindemann's number. They won't let him move. But Todd's in a learning process, obviously. Now there's the shot, and let's watch. Ross goes for the ball, there's the foul, right over the shoulder. It's one of the tough things to learn as a young kid. You make a mistake. 
miss the jump shot, your only instinct then is to go after. It's tough not to make that foul. One minute, 45 seconds left. John Ross at the line, just two points tonight. And it's the free throw. Very much impressed by the way Ellis played in the face of the overbalance against him tonight. Ellis is a good player. Just doesn't have a lot of help from the outside if they're not hitting jump shots. Because anytime a team's not hitting jump shots, you can play the defensive post a lot harder. Full court pressure and the block goes against Pozan. So the sophomore from Oakland, Illinois, picks up personal number two. And we'll send Indiana to the line. Two While Chris three Reynolds three ready, so let me remind you again, Baylor and Indiana square off in the Copper Bowl, New Year's Eve at 8 o'clock. Tickets are available through the IU ticket office, 1-800-662-6873. And the Alumni Association has its air and land tours available. Those packages, you can contact another 800 member. This would be 800-553-5527. A good pass to Reynolds, and we'll go back to the line. Very good pass by Damon. Personal foul, Notre Dame, number 15, Brooks Boyer. Boyer with the foul. Good out of that pass. Damon sees him right away, makes a pass early. Chris does a good job of drawing the contact. Now he goes to the line trying to be rewarded for the nice move. Chris has had his problems. He finds his rhythm, then loses it at the line. He's had some mechanical problems with his release. He's got a little hitch up towards the top. They've been working. I know the coaching staff's been working very hard at getting the hitch out of there, and it's something he's going to have to learn to do. If he's learned to become a good shooter, he's an excellent player. Well, Lindemann tries to chase it down, and in turn knocks down Jason Williams, but the ball goes out of bounds, and Notre Dame will bring it up. 77-43, less than a minute and a half to play. Boyer guarded by Reynolds. You can always put, a, can always put a player at the foul line to see what kind of shooter they are. Ross back outside to Williams for three. No. And the big long arms of Alan Henderson pick it up and off the leg of Todd Leary it goes, but it was deflected, and so it's going to be Notre Dame ball. I know Coach Ron Fell in particular has worked very hard with Chris's shot, and it's come a long way this fall. Chris knows he's got a problem with the shooting. He's worked very hard at it, and it's improved immensely since the beginning of the season. Well, that's one of the reasons why the coach early had opted to redshirt. Exactly. I wanted to give him a year to work on shooting, but he's too good for this team. He's probably their sole leader on the floor, him and Jamal Meeks, and I think it really hurt Coach in his leadership role when he was without him at UCLA. Leary off the feed. Lindemann goes for the ball, deflects it into the hands of Reynolds, who has it blocked away, and Chris goes back to the line. The intensity hasn't let up. And that in itself is an encouraging sign with 33 seconds left. I know the point's been driven in, and it's, I'm sure the players with Indiana are pleased that they've come back with two consistent halves. He moved up to the line. To, uh, his his motion was a little smoother that time, and probably the pace was up a little bit. I think he realized what he does. He just needs to do it more consistently. There was a little hitch at the top. He won out of his last four. Outside, Boyer lets it fly. No good. And Reynolds up. Has it taken away by Ross. Boyer will fire again, and he scores the three this time. Brooks Boyer hits Pater. Ten seconds. And uh, intended for Bailey. It's up to Boyer. An easy two. For, oh, he missed it. And the buzzer sounds to end this game. A gratifying victory to pretty well-balanced taps for Indiana and a nightmare for Notre Dame. As John McLeod will take his boys back to South Bend and try to put things back together. Final score, 78-46. We'll be back after these messages. 
time it points Indiana's way. 